So a little bit about Team Studio. We may have assisted you in the past with application development. We've been delivering innovative developer tools and productivity tools to the Notes and Domino community since 1996, where we specialized in source code control, version management, and source code management. And we moved into the mobile application arena in 2010 with Unplugged. Unplugged gives you the ability to extend your Notes app out to mobile devices. The unique thing about Unplugged is that it leverages the powerful technology of XPages and provides a native app experience for the user and these apps have the capability to function when offline. On May 1st, we released Unplugged 3.1. This version brings Android up to speed with the improvements we made for iOS users in Unplugged 3.0 and also offers improvements for iOS users. With Unplugged 3.1, apps run twice as fast and development of apps is easier than ever for both Android and iOS devices. We're very proud to have been the recipient of two IBM Collaboration Solutions Awards for Unplugged in 2013 and 2014. In January of this year at the Connect Conference, IBM awarded Unplugged with the Best of Show and CTO Awards. And at IBM Partner World in February, IBM recognized the platform as a finalist for a Beacon Award. This product is available on the major mobile platforms, including BlackBerry, Android, and iOS. In addition to Unplugged as a platform, we provide off-the-shelf templates like Team Studio Continuity for mobile business continuity, OneView for mobile approvals requests, and Customer View for mobile CRM. Unplugged works on all the major platforms, and we'd be happy to arrange a demo to show you how these tools work. Just contact me during this webinar using the chat window, or contact us directly from our website or Bitphone. Lastly, today's webinar is part of our free monthly webinar series on X pages and related topics. Our next webinar with TLCC will be on October 7th about the X pages mobile controls with Graham Akers. Then in November, Howard and Paul will present on accessing data from X pages with the relational controls. You can register for these webinars from the Team Studio website. And with that, I'd like to pass the presentation on to Howard so he can talk a little bit about TLCC and then dive into today's topic. Over to you, Howard. Thank you, Courtney. Uh, just give me a second to uh, share my screen here. Uh, I'd like to welcome, uh, first of all, say good morning and good afternoon and good evening to everybody. Um, we, uh, For those of you who have attended our webinars before, uh, you know that we normally do these every month, but we did take the summer off, so I hope everyone had a uh, great summer. Uh, let's see, I'm going to start sharing my screen. So uh, as Courtney mentioned, I'm going to be your uh, co-host today along with my partner at TLCC, Paul De La Nevia. Paul, do you want to say hello? Yeah, let me add my good day to everyone and welcome. Okay, so uh, thanks, Paul. And so um, let me uh, first just say a, a couple things about TLCC. Uh, many of you know us because we've been around since 1997, uh, and we have self-paced courses on uh, X pages, uh, courses for developers, admins, and users. Uh, all our courses are delivered via the Notes client, and then you can do demonstrations and activities using your Domino Designer or Domino Administrator client. Uh, in addition to our self-paced courses, uh, many of our customers have also taken advantage of our mentoring services, and this helps bridge the gap between what you learn in our courses and then applying that to your actual applications. So um, it's kind of just basically it's a way to uh, get a little consulting, a little um, extra help uh, as you apply those skills. We also can do instructor-led classes where we can come on to your site and do a private class, or we can do that uh, virtually with an instructor-led uh, online class. And last but not least, we also can help you with your application development. Uh, we do uh, X pages development where we can take your existing notes applications and convert them over to um, X pages or support your existing application infrastructure or your server infrastructure with administration help. Um, since the summer, we had a couple new courses. Uh, the one that we're really most excited about is our X pages development two course, where we added some new topics, a whole new modules on the Dojo data grid, which is a real nice way to present information uh, moving away from our traditional notes views, and the, also the relational controls, which is a way to uh, uh, access relational data in your X pages applications. So have a, a look at those uh, new courses. In addition, we also have a sale going on. Um, 
starting today through September 29th. Uh, many of our most popular courses and packages are on sale, so you can save uh, uh, hundreds of dollars, if not even more. Um, Courtney mentioned the, our upcoming webinars. Uh, in addition, that all our old webinars going back a couple years are available at the link on the slides. Uh, so you have a couple years worth of uh, interesting content. And uh, also we're planning in December, we haven't put up the information yet, but we're planning a session on Bluemix, which is the IBM cloud for developers and how you can uh, move your applications to that platform. Uh, finally, I um, want to mention the IBM Champion program. Uh, many of you have probably heard about this. Uh, the nominations are open for next year. And, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of good information out there on Stack Overflow and uh, blogs and, and people host videos. All that information is there because a non-IBM person is taking their time and effort to contribute to the community. And so if you use any of that information out there on OpenNTF or anything like that, you know, think about nominating the, the person whose blog really helps you out or the, who produces videos or maybe even host a webinar, hint, hint. Uh, think about nominating those people in the IBM Champion program. Uh, yeah, the link is on the slides. We'll send out the slides to everyone. And there's more about the Champion program uh, as well on the second link. Okay, so uh, the, the um, right now, um, you can ask questions. Uh, WebEx changed your interface, uh, so my slides aren't really updated, but the place where you go is still the same. At the top of the WebEx interface is a Q&A button, and you can click on that Q&A button and ask your questions there. So any questions related to, you know, that you want to ask of the speakers, don't ask in the chat. Use the Q&A panel, and we will get to those questions at the end of the webinar. Okay, so I'd like to introduce, uh, we actually have four IBM uh, folks on the uh, panel today. Uh, Kramer Reeves, who's the Director of uh, Product Management for ICS, uh, formerly known as Lotus, and Pete Jansen, who concentrates mostly on the application development side, and Saroob, uh, as well as uh, Scott Suter, who will be uh, uh, presenting today or doing demos. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Kramer. Uh, Courtney, if you can pass the uh, baton over. Okay, I believe um, uh, yeah, but we're going to pass it to, to Saurabh. He's going to drive um, and uh, so we can get ready for the demo as well. So uh, Correct, good morning. I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Howard. And, and thank you um, to TLCC and to uh, Howard and uh, Paul and Courtney for inviting us to present today. This is Kramer. I'm uh, delighted to be speaking with uh, so many of the customers and partners in this space. Um, I appreciate your your business and your, your passion and your loyalty in, in the uh, in the, the Notes Domino environment and uh and even um into some of the other capabilities across IBM and and um uh, happy to know that you're interested in TLCC and their solutions as well. Um so today we're gonna talk to you a little bit about an update we've been doing to some of the user groups uh around the world here over the last couple of weeks. Um uh, we've been, uh, myself and Scott and uh, Pete and uh, Saurabh are uh, on the road quite a bit, uh, meeting with customers and, and talking to the user groups. And so it's, um, uh, it's, it's really nice that we have an opportunity to share uh, this content and the story, uh, the strategy and the vision that we have with, um, uh, with all of you uh, today and to bring you up to speed on some of the latest uh, uh, investments and developments that we have. So um, some of the content is uh, forward-leaning, so um, no commitment here, but uh, certainly our intent. And uh, as you know, when we talk about futures and roadmap, um, we like to share with you what our vision is and, uh, and uh, give you a sense of directionally where we're going and the importance of certain parts of our business. So um, uh, take what we say with a grain of salt, but um, you know, have confidence that these are things that are high priority for us. Uh, so we'll go through the... Um, uh, the portfolio today, I'll talk a little bit about uh, the uh, the strategy. We'll get into some of the product updates. Um, we will 
uh, then talk uh, about uh, the roadmap, and then we'll also have a few um, uh, key links for you for uh, resources and the like uh, towards the end. Uh, so some key uh, next steps for you to take. Um, I think it's important that we ground our uh, discussion in the investments that are being driven across the entire corporation. And it's uh, very exciting for us to be in the space right now because uh, from our senior leadership all the way up to our chairman, uh, Ginny Rometty, uh, the impacts of the investments that are being made across IBM are significant for this area, for the area that I manage and the area across the collaboration solutions portfolio. Um, the priorities are very clear and we are able to take advantage of those. Uh, the big data and analytics story is a key part of the, the broader growth strategy for IBM, uh, and we will show you uh, examples of how analytics are being brought into uh, the platform. The cloud, as you know, is as vital a part of the technology industry and the transformation that's occurring around the world uh, as, um, as, as, as the Internet was uh, 15 years ago, as client server was before that. Um, the, um, the rapid pace of customers to understand the potential, the plans, and the value, um, uh, the, the options um, uh, for moving to the cloud to uh, not only reduce costs but also to uh, gain the flexibility of a rapid iteration and development cycle um, is, is beginning to be realized. Uh, and IBM has made significant investments there to prepare for this journey. In fact, we've had quite a bit of success with many of our partners and customers already. Uh, and then finally, more directly impacting the area that uh, you all um, are probably most familiar with is the, the idea of engagement. And as we continue to develop um, and, and take advantage of the appetite for uh, mobility and the, um, the trends of moving more and more of the, the social type of expectations and experiences that we uh, that we have from a personal basis into the enterprise and across uh, organizations and institutions from a business perspective, that creates uh, opportunity for IBM and specifically for our division as well. So the, the nice thing, although this is a, a high-level corporate chart, it's, it's a very important one because it helps communicate to you all that we've got tremendous investments behind our division helping to influence and to allow us to take advantage of not only resources, um, uh, expertise, uh, deep industry thought, and um, above all, the actual technology that uh, is uh, available for us to incorporate in the platform. An example of that is if we think about mobile. And in the mobile space, the latest announcement around IBM's big partnership with uh, Apple, hopefully you all have recognized the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the impact of this, the potential here, and uh, essentially the desire of Apple to uh, take advantage of IBM's uh, industry knowledge or deep expertise or enterprise focus, um, uh, these type of relationships that we have at the uh, C-level and especially in the CIO's office and more frequently across um, CMOs and, and across the entire C-suite. Um, and in turn, uh, IBM uh, recognizes a nice partnership with Apple uh, based on state-of-the-art designed products and um, most recently with the announcements uh, earlier this week. Hopefully you all saw um, uh, the impact of yet another major set of announcements by Apple into the consumer market. Uh, many of these uh, can now be taken and incorporated in our business strategy. And as we have over the years worked with Apple uh, to define many of the elements across IBM of our of, of key products, we now have a stronger relationship, deeper permission, and a bigger opportunity to uh, delight our, our customers and, and deliver great value. So it's a two-way partnership, and we continue to take advantage of uh, the opportunity there. Now, 
All of that leads to our particular portfolio in the collaboration space. Um, we are uh, delivering a robust set of uh, capabilities, both on premises and in the cloud, uh, to help customers achieve a goal of becoming a social business, of collaborating at the enterprise level uh, with the security and scalability uh, that they expect and with a seamlessness and uh, ease of use uh, that they've become accustomed to from the personal space and with personal social um, uh, uh, social business type uh, capabilities. Surrounding that is uh, an, an anchor in this portfolio, which is around the application development capabilities, uh, capabilities such as X pages, and now even more um, uh, frequently uh, updates and capabilities around socially enabling the apps uh, within the broader portfolio using our SDK toolkits. Uh, so that uh, customers can socially, socially, socially enable an, um, a marketing application or uh, a human resources application and take advantage of um, the, uh, the, the basic capabilities to um, expand uh, the, the impact that those applications have. Uh, so it works in multiple ways uh, as we go into the app dev strategy, and we'll talk some more about that in a few minutes. So if that's our portfolio, let me talk just a little bit more about um, the vision that we have, especially for uh, the space that I manage, which includes the uh, the content that we're going to discuss today around messaging, uh, the, the Notes Domino portfolio, including our chat and meetings and, and other elements of the portfolio. Um, you know, over the years, we have certainly developed with, uh, with help and input from the customers and partners from around the world. Uh, a, a set of prioritization around building a platform that integrates a set of application development tools uh, that we've extended out uh, early on through a mobile perspective with uh, capabilities like Traveler, more recently out to the web uh, and, and through modernization efforts and standardization efforts with X pages and, and bringing Java into the environment. Uh, and then we've continued that um, today with the investments, as I just mentioned, in cloud and analytics and uh, deeper capabilities uh, as we expanded in mobile to, uh, to Android and to Windows, um, as we continue to support um, the, the broadest set of platforms in the mobile space, and uh, of course, from a social perspective, uh, tying the capabilities together, but also uh, creating the environment where they can be uh, assembled into other um, uh, social uh, uh, application type uh, uh, environments. Now, moving forward, the next phase of uh, investment and um, innovation is going to build on all of this and incorporate much more of the cognitive capabilities that come from uh, the Watson group and from the, um, the capabilities that, uh, that we've been uh, building up out of, the, um, uh, out of the Watson family that Mike Roden leads. Um, for example, uh, if we imagine what could happen in, in, uh, in the messaging space with calendaring and contacts and, and our day-to-day our -day, um, productivity, uh, how can we bring in the, the elements of virtual assistance? Uh, IBM acquired a company called Cognia, and if we think about uh, the potential around Cognia and virtual assistance, you know, how far away are we? from bringing in virtual assistant technology to adding more predictive capabilities and um, a more intelligent environment in the day-to-day -day aspects of what we do uh, in just managing our calendar and just handling basic uh, to-dos and actions. Uh, these are some of the things that the team is investigating quite deeply, and uh, this is really um, uh, an incredible opportunity for us in the future to uh, to take advantage of, of what Watson offers. So that's just a little bit of the roadmap. The investments on the bottom continue. And uh, speaking of some of those, I think a, a big part of our strategy that we've shared with you all around this space is particularly around offering choice. And 
One thing that IBM does a great job of is maintaining our broad set of environments and a broad set of uh, capabilities um, to allow customers to um, to protect their investments. And that's part of our strategy, and it's part of the reason why we continue to expand the client strategy to support a, a um, for example, a bring-your-own-device strategy in the mobile space for a number of years and a, a strategy that's moving closer to a bring-your-own-client strategy. Today we have various options that, uh, that many customers use depending on their, their appetite for uh, cloud-based solutions or web-based solutions or rich client solutions um, or even um, uh, basic um, messaging or um, application interface capabilities uh, as well. And we will continue to do that um, uh, moving forward. It's a key part of our vision because you all have told us that uh, your environments are dispersed. Uh, they're uh, they're um, uh, many times uh, built by acquisitions and um, uh, although standardization continues to be a goal that we see for many clients, we also recognize uh, a need to support uh, uh, um, uh, disparate environments as well. So that's sort of where we are um, from a strategy perspective. I think many of you wanted to hear an update on where we are from one specific part of the portfolio that has to do with the messaging space. And as a reminder, um, a, a what is our, our mail next mission? Essentially, it was two points. We've uh, shared this before. Um, let's uh, evolve the mail space. Let's evolve the way we work. Um, let's try to create an environment that I really do enjoy working in. Uh, let's make it elegant. And although we've got powerful ca capabilities uh, within our messaging space, um, really no one in the market, in our mind, has turned this into a delightful experience where we spend so much of our day um, answering email and um, uh, working in calendars and trying to deal with to-dos uh, and follow-ups. And then the second point was we wanted a system that could work for me and a signal to uh, what we can do from an analytics and an intelligence uh, perspective and where we're going from a cognitive perspective. Uh, the the environment, the software has arrived uh, to a point where the system can work for me in a much more intelligent fashion. Let's create an environment that can do that. And in a sense, that's what uh, that's what we've done. And um, uh, we've introduced Mail Next, and if we uh, let's just define this now uh, more specifically. In what what exactly is it? So um, if we go to the next chart, uh, you'll see that the way we're shaping up the storyline, we're talking about an environment that really does work for you, um, that works, uh, you know, for your community, for your life, and not the other way around. Um, it's uh, it, it, it's an environment that will get to know you. It'll get to know what you care about. It'll be able to adopt to your needs. It'll be able to um, recognize patterns and trends and new possibilities of how to work. Um, and we do believe that this is going to be a game changer. Uh, and in fact, it's um, it's more than just mail. It's uh, a new way of uh, of working. So we're going to show you a little bit of a demo today. Um, I want to just remind folks that we announced this as coming back in. Uh, uh, back in January, the team has been working uh, quite diligently over the past um, uh, eight months or so to uh, to get the code ready. And I just want to walk you through, you know, where we've been. Um, uh, if we just page through a couple of the, the screenshots in the environments, I'll give you a sense of of, um, of what this is and how we've evolved. Certainly. You, many of you probably know by now that the, the key concept is around prioritization and, uh, and clarity um, in the ability to focus on the most important work items that are being presented to you. Having the system, as you see the bubbles and the people across the top, present to me, present to, um, uh, to um, the, each user uh, who I should focus on and can the environment uh, at some point, present all of the work to me. That's the aspiration. It's certainly probably not attainable. Um, but uh, as we drive forward, 
uh, with the investments and uh, the iterations on the service, on the capability, we're finding that the, um, the potential for, um, for a more intelligent system to present to me the next most important item or the most important sets of messages and emails that I need to focus on uh, is a is a solid objective and an aspiration that can help save time and and um, immediate, offer immediate productivity gains. So we we introduced this um, this in, uh, prototype back in January. And this was built off of the uh, the Smart Cloud Notes environment, and you can see on the next uh, screenshot that we uh, we evolved and uh, are going to present this. Basically, if you want your old inbox, if you're in a you know in a comfort zone of working from uh, a the, the what I call the database of of messaging records. Um, uh, you know, and incidentally, I mean, this is a this is a fine-looking user interface. This is a, a very clean. It's easy to process. We can triage, and it's quite powerful. But what we haven't done as an industry yet is really evolve this experience much at all. It's still the cascading flood of messages that we have to go through every single day, and just many times seem like they're endlessly coming, and and we'll never uh, get through them all. Now, social has certainly helped, and uh, more and more work continues to move to social. Part of what we're doing with Mail Next is, is accelerating the integration and the opportunity of social to augment the way we work with email and that transition and that blurring of lines and that eventual integration of messaging and social that we believe is ultimately going to occur. And if you see that uh, that we were here and we are here essentially with our with our smart cloud notes environment and with your 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 inbox, then we we created a first iteration. We shared that with you all back in the uh, the spring and over the summer. And you can see on the next chart, you know that okay, it's starting to to start to look like something else. We got the prioritization working. We got the the analytics working under the covers to start recommending. You know who should I be working with? Who should I be tracking and chasing? And uh, and and where are some of the key work items? Still looks pretty similar to my my current inbox. The wiring was there, the integration was there, but the design uh, we hadn't quite got there yet. Well, today um, we're going to share with you the latest design, and uh, we'd ask your help in not uh, tweeting this out and, and honoring the, this particular webcast and. And, and seeing this for the first time, we still have a lot of work to do, and, uh, but eventually the vision is, is shaping up to be a different experience. Now you can see that this is not your standard inbox. Up at the top, you can see that on the top left, if I want to get to my inbox, there's the mail icon. I can go right there and, and continue to triage. However, Across the top, and we'll show you a demo in just a couple of minutes, um, my favorites are being presented, and even a few additional ones are being recommended. The ability to track actions, the ability to, to see what I owe others and, and what others owe me. Um, digital analytics we're showing for the first time as being a potential capability to add in here. New calendaring capabilities as well. And if you page down one more, you can see Yes, I can get back to my inbox pretty quickly and have that uh, have that traditional experience. But let's go back one, um, and let me just spend one more second on uh, this landing page. And you know, this is a different experience. And in fact, one of um, uh, we've got different versions and services internally in our development environment. Um, uh, testing out some of the capabilities. One of the services, in fact, uh, a user can get 85% of their messages prioritized within about uh, 15 to, to 16 different favorite box, uh, favorite uh, buckets up top. Now, if you think about that, this is really the objective that we have as as a business. How can I drive that? Uh, that remaining 15% of messages down to zero. I'll never get there, but if I can have the system present to me 
the 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 top 80 the 85 percent to 90 percent of the messages that come in and categorize that for me and say focus on this Kramer um, that's where we believe the future is and then if I could do that with my with my file sharing what files should I review or what meetings should I be uh, conscious of you know let's get to the point where the system prioritizes the work and that's what's beginning to happen in our test environment still more work to do but um, the potential is, is paying off it's really showing up now so let's go forward a couple of pages and in a second um, I'm going to turn this the the, um, the screen over to uh, to Scott Souter and um, we're going to show you a little bit more of uh, what the demo looks like so um, let's pass the the controls over to Scott now Scott I think you're uh, um, you're about ready and we're going to show you what the um, you know what the actual environment looks like and uh, we've recorded a uh, a quick uh, demo here to show you a scenario of the live code um, that's uh, running here and we're as mentioned we'll talk to you a little bit about the timelines and uh, when you all can get uh, a closer look at this and uh, see it firsthand Cool. So Scott, Great. over to you. Um, next, what we want to do is talk just a little bit about the um, the architecture and some of the technical elements uh, of the environment. Um, one of the, the key things that we wanted to show you all is um, some of the various elements and how we're building this. Um, there, uh, as you know, we are starting from the uh, the foundation of the Domino messaging environment. We have infused that with new investment and um, new innovation. Uh, all of this is in the cloud. It's part of the uh, Smart Cloud Notes uh, service, so it's uh, available. Um, uh, the lion's share of the the capabilities are um, uh, available as part of the Smart Cloud Notes service. Uh, today, that's where a lot of the work is occurring. Um, Mail Next takes us to the next level, and as you can see, uh, changes the experience and brings forward a, a new and different type of uh, client technology and client experience. Um, we've moved to um, uh, starting with a browser-based environment. You can see the various browsers that we're, we're going to support. Um, we are using um, HTML5 uh, along with some of the other uh, modern web-based uh, design and development tools. Um, and uh, we'll talk some more about the mobile environment as well as we, uh, I think we saw a question about iOS and, and we'll get into our plans there, which are um, very exciting. Uh, from the server side, uh, one of the key things that we're doing is, um, uh, as I mentioned, we're, we're building this on Domino on the mail server, but we're also incorporating a very advanced search capabilities with um, investments in the analytics space and bringing in uh, the ability to uh, handle the indexing in a way that um, sets us up for doing some very interesting things on how work and messages uh, and interactions are presented and how they're, they are pre uh, prioritized. Uh, so the facets and um, the modern uh, search uh, indexing capabilities uh, really allow us to do and, and achieve some of those um, those objectives. Um, and then finally, uh, you saw at the beginning some of the digital analytics, uh, the tracking and analysis that we can do with digital analytics uh, allows us to present to uh, the users and to the administrators uh, a much deeper understanding of how your work is uh, coming in and how your work is going out. Uh, and that will give you insight, that will give the users insight and also the administrators insight uh, to understand um, how to uh, you know, better uh, approach the, um, the goals of productivity across the various organizations if we see uh, trends occurring, uh, bottlenecks occurring, and, um, uh, and or um, uh, bandwidth being compromised or being uh, made more available. Uh, from a, a worker perspective. So there's uh, quite a bit of uh, plans and ideas that we have in bringing in the digital analytics to uh, give us greater insight into um, 
uh, the uh, the performance um, from a a user perspective. Now um, we've shared the uh, architecture in the past, and I just wanted to give you just a, another view of this so you can see how things are lining up. Um, uh, as you as we mentioned before, from a client perspective, uh, the the ability to uh, deliver this as a a modern uh, and um, extremely uh, robust uh, and powerful yet um, uh, you know a non compromising performance perspective uh, is one of the priorities and taking advantage of uh, HTML5 is allowing us to do create that kind of environment uh, as you can see uh, what we showed you is all browser based um, and hopefully you got a sense of uh, the response time uh, as well now deeper under the covers um, the on the left side the search analytics and the um, uh, the ability to deliver a responsive performance from a an indexing perspective uh, is um, is part of the the integration that we've done in the in the um, investment and development work we've done with the core domino environment. Uh, on the right side, you can see uh, the linkage to social in an overt fashion uh, occurring with some of the various services that we offer from uh, the uh, the connections um, environment, uh, which is, um, uh, as you all know, is called Smart Cloud Engage uh, from a, a marketing perspective. So getting uh, access to um, profiles information, uh, uh, direct linkage to the files app for uh, both um, uh, viewer and uh, file management capabilities, uh, along with blogs and, and wikis uh, as part of our um, initial release. We already have the integration done uh, with other parts of the apps uh, on-premises, for example, with uh, activities. Uh, we can do that today in Notes 9. Uh, and those are some of the other apps that we'll continue to look at and uh, continue to expose and integrate as part of the service. So um, uh, a lot of great progress by uh, Lily Reisenbaugh and Vinod Serafin and Andrew Davis and others uh, on um, the technical architecture to make this uh, come a long way just in a very short period of time. Now, uh, there's a question about how to get access and timing, and I'll just uh, hold on giving you a lot of the details there for now. Uh, just recognize that uh, as we get closer to um, uh, Q4, we'll give you more details uh, about this, but essentially there's you know, three types of customers, either you're, you're on the cloud or you're on premise or you're um, interested in uh, moving to IBM, and there's three paths that we're going to provide for you. If you're on the cloud today, you're on the right path. If you're on premise, um, on premises, then um, stand by. We're not uh, we're not announcing anything specific or committing to on premises yet, but uh, stand by. We will uh, we will be communicating more direction uh, in that space in the very near future. So uh, no worries. Uh, just stay uh, stay where you are if you're uh, more comfortable on premises, and we will uh, eventually give you some more information there. Um, and of course, if you're if you're not an IBM customer, and uh, it's very interesting to to meet with customers who are frustrated with uh, their experience and especially their costs, uh, and they're excited about the potential that uh, Mailnex offers them. Okay, I know we've uh, spent a lot of time on on Mailnex, and uh, that's one of the the uh, key investments we have. But we also have quite a few investments occurring in the application development space. And um, I know uh, Team Studio and and um, uh, TLCC have done quite a bit of work on uh, uh, the uh, the app dev space, and uh, we are um, we're excited to share with you some of our latest um, investments and roadmaps and directions. And uh, Pete Jansen, our uh, senior product manager, will take you guys through that. So Pete, over to you. Thank you very much, Kramer. Uh, good day, everybody. So, sorry if we could move to the next slide, please. I wanted to kind of just, you know, revisit some of the core values and capabilities that we have around Domino. I'm sure, you know, you're all well aware of these things, but I've been kind of monitoring the, the Q&A here in the, in the side panel. And, you know, one of the beauties of 
the platform is its strong application uh, development capabilities and heritage there. And the fact that, you know, those applications that you invested in over the year continue to, to work uh, as well as ever on newer versions of, the, of, uh, of Domino itself. And, you know, we continue to invest in application development. We had a very, uh, you know, robust set of new capabilities delivered over the past several years here. We continue to actively work very closely with uh, and leverage OpenNTF because that's a very important way for us to go ahead and deliver new functionality to the developer community in a more timely manner than if we had to wait for uh, various releases of our on-premises offerings. And so, you know, the focus that, that Kramer was just talking about, the initiatives around MailNext uh, that Scott just to uh, show to you, you know, those uh, move messaging into a, the next generation here. With applications, we are moving in, in a similar manner here and looking at how we can go ahead and not only improve the tools and the runtimes that you're leveraging for building applications, but also allow those to you know, transition um, from an on-premises infrastructure up to cloud. And we've already got done some initiatives in this area around uh, building um, allowing developers to go ahead and leverage our investment in software. And in addition to that, there's uh, certainly a number of other hosting partners out there that have supported the Domino application um, infrastructure in the cloud. How does this kind of dovetail with what we're doing with Mail Next? Well, today, you know, from a uh, cloud infrastructure, we can go ahead and leverage applications in a hybrid infrastructure with that of the messaging which is running within the cloud-based service. That will continue to uh, be a capability we have moving forward, and as we build out our capabilities around MailNext and the service itself, we're looking at different ways that we can provide integration uh, between applications, be they domino-based applications or even third-party applications than that of the service. So, Stay tuned for more information as we move, um, we further define that and uh, move that initiative forward. But um, why don't we move on to the next slide. What I wanted to do is share with you a couple of customer examples of how they're leveraging Domino today. So Selena is an insurance group and they wanted a way for policyholders to be able to create accounts and sign up for electric, electronic delivery of documents. Prior to this, it was a very, either, you know, uh, you know a a process which required somebody to call or send a letter or something like that or work through their account representative. Now with XPages um, and leveraging actually the XPages extension library, they're able to build an interface that worked from desktop or mobile devices here by leveraging Twitter Bootstrap and basically providing self-service for those end users to go ahead and create that. So, you know, a very efficient way for them to deliver this capability to their customers and, you know, greater customer satisfaction in the end, certainly. If we move on to the next slide, Hendrix is a regional health provider um, in Indiana, and they've been leveraging Domino for, for many years for the application development capabilities as well as meshing capabilities. But one of the things they needed to do was to provide uh, better information to all the clinicians working within the hospital here. And so they wanted a way to surface content, not only from their Domino applications, but other applications in a HIPAA compliant manner. And I think this solution speaks to the value of XPages and how it's a really very good system for integrating disparate systems into a unified end user experience here. So now clinicians can come up bring up this portal, get all the information from all the various disparate systems on the patient that they're dealing with. So a huge you know, benefit and gain of productivity for clinicians at Hendrix. The next uh, customer sample is VCC, very large project construction project management uh, company with a global presence. They have um, developed a project management solution on top of Domino which their project managers use out in the field to, uh, you know, capture various information, share information with other other product managers and corporate. And so, what did they what they wanted to do was uh, go ahead and improve the end user accessibility to this. So what they did is they worked uh, in using um, 
the mobile capabilities built into XPages here provided a way for their project managers to go ahead and work with this uh, project management solution from various mobile devices. So really extending the reach of that uh, Domino application easily uh, and securely into, a, into uh, locations where those project managers need it. Um, so let's move on to uh, another area uh, that's certainly got a lot of attention from the developer community, both, you know, I would say the notes and Domino development community is certainly interested in this, but the, the greater ecosystem of developers, you know, across the globe. Bluemix is IBM's platform as a service offering, and it was in beta earlier um, this year and is now open for production. If you go on to the next slide, um, it really allows developers to focus on quickly go, uh, creating applications and not worrying about uh, having to uh, stand up an infrastructure for building those applications. It allows developers to go ahead and compose applications by using different uh, build packs or run times, such as Java, Node.js, et cetera, to go ahead and build the application and then tie that application to various services, be they a database, be they various mobile services, DevOps, et cetera. All of this is built into this platform as a service. So the question is, from an IBM Collaboration Solutions perspective, what are we doing? We're looking at ways to uh, bring the Domino application programming model, the, the benefits that we've had with this, uh, to uh, the Bluemix environment. And so we're currently, we have an investigation going on right now, and we hope to be able to share more information about that. As well as, we're looking at ways to go ahead and expose our various, you know, uh, connection services that are running in the cloud to be utilized in applications built on the Bluemix platform. So stay tuned for more information um, as, we, as we move that initiative forward. Um, and hopefully we'll have some, some great announcements for you uh, at Connect Ed. So futures, just briefly, I know we're kind of getting tight on time here. From an app dev candidate perspective, we're looking, you know, we're, we're focusing on applications in the cloud, initiatives um, around running those on software, looking at Bluemix. Responsive web design, I know a huge amount of developers out there are already leveraging this, and what we're doing here is improving the capabilities within the uh, design time experience and runtime to uh, create responsive web applications. Relational data source, we just did a great update uh, to OpenNTF on enhancements for uh, using relational data sources. So that's a great preview of what we're looking to deliver here in the product. Improving our integration with connections, bringing encryption and signature support to X pages. This is something that's been unique to the notes, to notes client applications, but uh, previously not available on the web. Productivity improvements, improving build management, more uh, investment in REST APIs, and yes, working with the NSF, improving some enhancements there, uh, things around improving indexing, how we store and manage indexing. So stay tuned for more information in that area. Um, and I'll hand it off to you, Sar, for some of the other futures. Sure, thanks, Pete. And so as uh, Kramer and Scott both mentioned around MailNext, it is cloud first, and it actually is part of what we call right now the Smart Cloud uh, for Social Business Platform. And if you've got Smart Cloud notes today, you saw one screenshot that showed you the uh, existing experience, and then MailNext would be uh, on top of that uh, as, a, as an additional experience you can get access to. So with Smart Cloud Notes, what, what are our priorities? So obviously, Mail Next is the top priority, one of the key actions or key areas we, we're investing in and bringing forward uh, later this year in Q4. Also, the Smart Cloud Notes Onboarding Manager, which will allow you to seamlessly get your company and users uh, from Domino on-premises pre on into the cloud uh, and remain in a hybrid model or go to uh, uh, service only. Additionally, local archiving and offline mail access, both of the connections mail add-on. So this is a, a great strategy um, to allow our customer the flexibility to choose a web-based, a completely web-based and mobile experience. You get your mail in the web, you can get local archiving, offline mail access, and application access all via the web, and then you obviously have your uh, mobile capabilities with Traveler. REST API access is another one that I think will be really popular with the community here. Opening up access to 
um, the REST APIs that we've got with Domino in the cloud and smart cloud nodes and expanding those uh, and also at some point bringing that type of REST API access into the mail next type features that uh, Scott showed you earlier. And just the bottom two around delegated administration, being able to, to segregate out roles and uh, GRC uh, adding on more archiving and those types of integrations into the service so customers have the flexibility to choose uh, their, their GRC solution. Now with the notes next candidates, we've got some key items that we're focusing on here around running rules on existing mail messages, which has been asked for a while. And I'll just cover a few of these. Uh, invitee, being able to forward a meeting invitation as an invitation without having to involve the chair or ask uh, via separate communication channel. You can just immediately forward on the meeting. Invite, and it'll turn into an invite for your recipient. Uh, delegating calendar without delegating contact. So these are just uh, a few of the highlights here around some of the things we're looking at for notes next in 2015 and beyond. And just to circle back, this, is not, this slide is not specifically futures, but we did want to mention uh, there was a question on mobile strategy as well. So Traveler 9011 for Android was released earlier this summer, and the focus here is uh, what you're going to see a lot more with our mail next experience on the mobile devices. So a more of a gesture-driven UI, what you expect with great consumer apps out there. We're bringing in a contacts app uh, with Android here where you can get access to your directory as well as uh, integrated with device contacts. We're leveraging the fact that you're on the phone. We can recognize that. And so like in this example, if Heather has, uh, if I have uh, Heather's phone number stored, I can call her directly from my inbox. I can start a text message with her directly from my inbox. I can get access at the same time and chat with her from my inbox. I can even pull up Heather's profile information in my corporate directory right from my inbox by clicking on her avatar and drilling into that information. And if Heather or, or if I got an email from someone on LinkedIn and I have LinkedIn on my phone, I can even get their LinkedIn information, uh, uh, their like profile picture populated there inside of the inbox. So it gives you a lot more of the capabilities you expect on the phone, on a mobile device, integrating in some of those apps. One of the cool ones, single calendar view, I'll call out, being able to see your personal and work calendars in the same place within your traveler calendar uh, or even within your local calendar on the phone. So if you haven't tried it, I highly recommend uh, picking that up today. Just in a week, we were able to get about 100,000 downloads. It's much higher, obviously, today. Uh, so give it a give it a whirl and, and provide us some feedback and let us know what you think. Now moving forward, Mail Next on mobile is our key initiative here. So bringing forward the Mail Next on mobile experience in tandem with the web experience, that is going to center a lot around the iOS apps that we're also working on. So providing uh, not only an app that uh, on iOS that you can use for uh, mail calendar contacts. But having that app be enabled for the mail next capabilities, the concept of you know your favorite people, the important people you want to work with, the concept of, uh, for example, team analytics, the same thing Scott showed you, but just on the mobile device, uh, keeping in mind that you know we're really focused on the user experience, so it will look uh, really amazing, give you the same capabilities, but it will it will take advantage of the fact that you're on a smartphone, and uh, leverage some of the capabilities there. Some of the things we're looking at are like voice integration to be able to speak and create a message or speak and take action uh, against Mail Next, for example. Another area of focus which, are, which I think a lot of people here on the call are familiar with is uh, integration with MDM and MAM vendors. As uh, you know, recently we purchased a company called Fiberlink, which is part of the IBM portfolio now, and we're doing some great work with integrating our, our products. Uh, we're continuing to work with mobile Iron, AirWatch, and more, such as Citrix, to bring in more and tighter integration with those products as well, uh, to give our customers some choice depending on what MDM and MAM vendor you've already selected, but as well as uh, uh, increase the security posture for, for Traveler overall. And you'll see that not only with Traveler, but also across the other parts of the portfolio, like same time and connection. And just one other one I'll call out is the GCM. So if you've got an Android device, uh, coming on later this year with a server update, we leverage Google Cloud Messaging to Im drastically improve the battery life on Android devices. So something uh, to stay tuned for and definitely pick that up once it's available. And without 
having a demo here to show, but just showing what some of the great things our uh, design team is putting forward. Here's an example uh, of a high-res mock-up of what we've got for the iOS client. Uh, this is a containerized app. You know, it's going to be connections and same time enabled. So leveraging in the one of the key reasons we wanted to bring o, uh, an app forward was the fact that we could integrate our product seamlessly inside. So look forward to that. Um, and we plan to integrate that with the leading MDM and MAM vendors I mentioned earlier. So this is obviously in draft mode, so this design is subject to change just as a heads up on that. So now I'll turn it back to Kramer to just cover the roadmap. Thanks, Saurabh, and um, hopefully by now you all have a good sense of um, some key investments we're going to make in the short term, or at least we intend to or we'd like to make in the short term. But I also wanted to point out that this is all part of a longer-term strategy that we have across the portfolio, and in fact we're looking well out to 2016 and 2017 for the scheduling and lineup of when various updates and uh, releases will occur uh, in the future. Um, I'm not going to call out anything specific on this chart. It's more just to give you a sense of the breadth of the portfolio, both uh, on-premises in the bottom and in the cloud on top. And you can even see, for example, uh, a tentative uh, timeline of when Mail Next might come out uh, in the market for on-premises. Um, so, as I said, stay tuned for more detail on uh, a number of different areas as we get into Q4 and uh, as we line up for Connect N, which um, I want to talk about in just a second, uh, we will have even more detail and more discussions on uh, various updates. Certainly for uh, any further detail on the roadmap, if you want us to go deeper, we're always uh, happy to uh, send a, um, a senior sales representative or uh, a member of the global team into the uh, into any of uh, your accounts or directly in if you're a customer to your environment and talk to you um, uh, about uh, the, the specifics. Uh, so there are a few resources and links here that you can get more detail on, and I did want to mention Connect Ed. Um, this uh, event, the registration is open, and uh, we're going to have a fantastic uh, set of announcements and speakers and excitement, uh, and it's never too early to register and uh, also uh, get your hotel's reservations. So um, I think with that, I'm going to turn it back to Howard, and uh, we've got a few minutes for some questions. Uh, we've been answering a few uh, directly uh, throughout the webcast, and uh, let's see if we can get a few more done right now. Oh, thanks, Kramer. Uh, Courtney, if you can move the presentation over to me. Okay, so um, as my screen is coming up, just a reminder uh, that if you want to ask questions, there's a Q&A button. Uh, if you're in full screen mode, it will be at the top in the ribbon uh, bar that will uh, come down when you hover over it, or uh, it will be on the uh, top right uh, part of the WebEx window. So just ask your questions in the Q&A pane. We do have a number of questions queued up already. Um, and so just a reminder about some upcoming events. The IBM Champion nomination uh, are open, and uh, we're having a sale. And also, if you're in the London area, it's September 12th tomorrow, not a lot of notice, but uh, I'm sure those of you in the uh, uh, UK are already aware of ICON UK, which should be a great event uh, tomorrow. So, Paul, do you have a, a question or two lined up? Are the you there, Paul? Uh, just working on the audio. Can you hear me now? Yep, I hear you fine. Okay. So, a uh, couple of questions related to Mail Next functionality. Is the search uh, capability based on full text search? And what about searching against the archive? Scott, you want to take that one? I think he's on mute there. There he yes. is. Yes, I want to take that. <laughs> Thank you, mute. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, great question. Uh, it, it is not based on full text search. Um, it is based on 
uh, you want some late night reading, uh, go just take a look at some of uh, available on uh, Solar Cloud. Solar is S O L um, it's from the Apache Foundation, so open source, and it's just an amazing, amazing piece of technology around uh, a distributed. Part comes from how the, the search index is actually distributed, and the architecture thereof makes it blindingly fast. Um, so it's it's not, and they're not based on full text search. Not that you know, I'm, I, I like full text search the way we have it implemented in Domino today. But uh, this gives us additional opportunities when we uh, use this technology base. Um, that's how we're play with the you know the exposing of facets. So some good stuff there. Um, the other question, Howard, remind me what it was. It's still about uh, searching against the archive. Is yeah. that is that? So, yeah. So so at this point, it's it's not we're 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 targeting. So this is a point in time statement, you guys. You need to understand this. Um, Right out of the gate, our target, our focus is on the inbox. So anything that is in your, your your NSF where you send and receive mail and calendar entries from is is the initial target. But, however, comma, that shouldn't shouldn't be a forever and ever amen kind of statement because not only would archives make sense for us to consider at some point as part of that search capability, I mean, you can do that today, right, with the way search is built into uh, your notes experience, but uh, not only would that make sense to be thinking about that, but it would also be it would make sense to be thinking about things. If we're in an environment that provides connection services and capabilities, might there be some things even outside of my sphere of uh, you know email and calendaring and artifacts that are in box kind of thing? Might there be other things that we would want to at some point think about searching? So. Um, it's Kramer, you know, Kramer mentioned this down at the very beginning, talking about how further and further into the life of this product, um, we get a chance to do some interesting things around learned behavior and uh, cognitive things. What 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 can you learn about me? Well, you're going to learn real quick that I, I live in email a lot of the day, but I also live in places where I share stuff a lot all the day, too. So you better be thinking about that in terms of, you know, expanding some of the search capabilities. No promises there, obviously, but um, our heads and minds are around that stuff, and uh, that's, that's what's making this project so exciting to be to be a part of. So great questions. Right, back to you. So we had a, a couple of questions. I'm going to kind of summarize them for you guys in the form of just to kind of clarify, you know, what we were looking at was in a web browser, um, are there any plans to have this in a quote rich text Eclipse? You know, someone specifically asked about Eclipse. I mean, is this always going to be a web browser type of inbox mail experience, or are there plans to do more of a rich client? Well, you know, the, never is a long time, but uh, initially this is a a, um, uh, a web based experience. In fact. You know where where we start is not necessarily where we will end up, but certainly starting on the web is is the um, is the objective. The feedback that we've heard from customers is um, many of them have uh, given us the direction that they want to go lighter on the client, they want to remove the upgrade process, and um, that that that's an area for big improvement. So that's one of the reasons. Why, um, and besides the fact that the web technology has evolved, the development tools are better, the experience is better, the iterations are faster. Um, so that's another reason why um, we're we're starting with the web. But um, I can't comment on never, but uh, that's where we're starting, Howard. Oh, thanks, Kramer. Okay, uh, I have a question from Adam, and Pete, I think this is for you. Uh, with the new uh, IBM Apple business collaboration, are we going to see Domino Designer on the Mac? Well, I, I you know, I'm not saying that that uh, new collaboration was the Apple that tipped the cart, but I think you know, we know that there's been a long-standing desire for Designer on the Mac as well as Admin on the Mac for that uh, um, as well. So there, you know, we continue to look at ways to be able to do that. Uh, I have actually did recently see some uh, 
interesting approaches that may allow us to do this. Um, too early to kind of really share what those details might be, I think, um, but it, it's something, you know, that we continue to keep on the radar and would love to do it. I just can't give you a, a exact uh, time frame as to when that might become a reality. Okay, we also had a question kind of getting back to Core Domino about SHK2 support. Is someone who addressed that? I guess the question, the issue is uh, the uh, the person uh, who asked it brought up said that a, a lot of the um, browser folks like Chrome have already announced that they're going to not support SHK1 uh, in the near future, like 2016, and they're kind of worried about you know their Domino web apps. Yeah, so, the, you know, we, we, there certainly has been a fair amount of activity within the community regarding, you know, both the uh, interest in SHA-2 and TLS, and we are actively looking at, you know, how we can go ahead and address those capabilities um, as soon, you know, as soon as possible. So there, I know that we're, we're talking to a number of, um, you know, various uh, people within our design partner program and others around, you know, what their exact needs are within this area and um, actively working to address the concerns. Yeah, we've got another member of my team, uh, Don Harbison, who's my security expert, also looking into, um, you know, some of the other advancements. As folks know, there is an active blog around this topic over the last month, and we are taking, um, uh, you know, some steps. Sarb, did you want to make any other comments about uh, some of the security points that you've looked into as well? Yeah, and specifically on SHA-2 and, and TLS, we took some steps there starting with uh, 902 to add in that support around email and around uh, with webmail access as well as TLS support, um, leveraging IHS as the front end. And we're going to continue to expand that. So we definitely recognize, as Pete mentioned, that for the uh, web apps, you know, we've got this situation coming up with uh, with Chrome potentially down the line, and we just got to review the technical specifics and figure out a figure out a game plan. But yeah, we're, we're going to uh, tackle this one head on. Okay, thanks. Um, let me group a couple of questions together uh, about like to move to Mail Next. Obviously. Um, there's, you know, initially on the cloud, but the technology behind that, is it going to be domino? Do you need connections? Do you need, you know, for example, for the files, would you need uh, connections to handle that? Like, what is the um, the buy-in, I guess I should say, to when you, if they want to move to mail next? Sure. So what we started in 9.0, um, actually even back to 8.5.3, was um, the entitlement um, strategy to uh, introduce customers to uh, elements of the connections uh, capabilities and uh, to begin introducing more and more of the social potential into the um, mail environment. Um, with uh, Mail Next, that strategy continues and expands, and as you've seen, um, profiles and files and and, uh, and um, other elements of the communities within blogs and wikis, for example, are part of the uh, initial um, you know, phase of uh, social adoption that we want to uh, continue to introduce to the market. Um, so uh, our, you know, our intent, I can't get into too much on a packaging perspective um, prior to um, the, the formal announcements, uh, but our intent is to continue in that direction to um, to make it easier for customers to uh, become introduced to social and to use social and to to blur the lines between um, some of the broader collaboration environments um, so that that experience is seamless um, and so we want to make that process as easy and as cost effective as possible for our customers. And um, I think uh, once we get to that, the phase of the packaging and, and pricing, I think the customers will be uh, excited about uh, how we're going to be releasing this to market. But I have to hold off on, on uh, reviewing any details at this time. Okay, Kramer, thanks. So that's exciting news that more of it becomes seamless. Um, well, I think we're, we're obviously way over our time. 
uh, we're supposed to end at noon. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and, um, and, and say that that was our last question. And I'd like to thank our panelists um, for uh, presenting today. Uh, it was some great information, some exciting stuff coming down the road. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing some more about it in the next few months and then in Orlando. Um, Paul, do you have any follow-ups or Kramer or anyone else on the team? Oh, let me just add thanks for, for attending, everyone. Yeah, th thank you. And I, I think that I heard uh, there's a couple of other key questions that we'll want to get uh, out to uh, some answers out. And so um, uh, Howard and, and Paul, look forward to working with you, uh, you know, especially considering the, um, uh, the your your customers and, and others who have been um, dialing in here and recognizing the importance of Domino and the Domino environment. And, um, you know, we hope that you recognize that uh, MailNext is, is one of many investments we're making on the Domino platform, and it is certainly our intent to continue to build out uh, the, the seamlessness and the integrated environment of application development and, and messaging and uh, incorporating more of the social capabilities uh, for the long term. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a key part of IBM's strategy and a big part of our business. So um, you all are invested in a very um, good part of uh, uh, the, the technology and the collaboration space. And thank you for your participation today and, and your, your investment and interest. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone, and I hope the rest of your day goes wonderful. <laughs>